He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Got a big news blitz coming up. The last five minutes of the show or so with Bob Chapman, we're going to play a video clip of an American in England having the police come over and say, you can't videotape any of these downtown buildings. He's about 100 yards away from the U.S. Embassy. We're going to charge you with terrorism. They promised when they passed that law it wouldn't be misused. They've arrested hundreds of journalists, mainline journalists as well, in England saying, you can't videotape anything now. So they put cameras on you, but you can't put cameras on them. We're going back to Bob Chapman here in just a moment with his economic report on what's happening. And don't forget, I'll be back this Sunday live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time here. If you don't have an AM or FM in your area, you can always listen at InfoWars.com. Acolablue.com, atmospheric water generator for the home. Pays for itself in one year if you buy your water from the store. Pure clean water without the fluoride and limited water from the humidity in the air. Know exactly what you're drinking. Machine produces up to 28 liters of water a day. That's 7.5 gallons. The generated water is passed through seven filters, including reverse osmosis and carbon. Simple to use, no chemicals, pollutants, or toxins, neutral pH, your own source of clean water from the air. Again, it goes through seven great filtration systems. This is wonderful. I have one here in the office. I have one at my house. We absolutely love it. Ecolablue.com, E-C-O-L-O, blue.com, 1-800-691-6043. That number, 800-691-6043, Ecolablue.com. Okay, going back to Bob Chapman. Bob, for stations that just joined us, uh, you were getting into what it means to have Chrysler and GM going under, going into receivership, uh, what's happening with gold, what's happening with the stock market, the Bilderberg Group meeting, uh, Jim Tucker's now got info. I'm going to tell you the latest info on that with that just broke an hour ago here on air, hour and a half ago. Get your take on that. But continue with the real economy and what's happening there. Well, I think, uh, as I said before, that the problems at Chrysler – uh, Ford, General Motors, and all of the manufacturers in the United States are a product of a planned obsolescence of American manufacturing, which began almost 30 years ago. I wrote about it uh, back in the early 80s because uh, uh, I had followed uh, what these people were up to. And, in fact, the first article I wrote was in 1967 on this. And, of course, I was a madman, and uh, now I'm not a madman. I'm a, I'm a mad old man. <laughs> But anyway, um, this is part of the plan to de- deindustrialize the United States. And it is, it, it is the very cornerstone of bringing the American economy financially and economically to its knees so that these people can create and implement world government. And this is part of the plan. And so it's not surprising to me. It's devastating for America. It's devastating for our fellow citizens who are going to be losing their jobs. And as we know, the 5 million jobs that were lost in the last eight years via this method, most of those fellows and ladies uh, who are making some $30 an hour are now lucky if they can make 15 and most of them are making less than that. And uh, that obviously is going to continue. And at the same time, when we have pulling at the bottom of the economy, uh, probably about 30 million illegal aliens, of which probably 15 or 12 million work. And uh, because of their status, they receive low wages, and, and uh, they pull wages down at the lower level. And at the same time, they take jobs away from Americans, American citizens. So we have this worst of all world circumstance that we're going through here. Now, one of the highlights I saw today is that uh, uh, there is a Buy American mode going on. And um, I just got a piece out of the Globe and Mail from Toronto uh, regarding that, which is in the next issue. And uh, they are now uh, in government contracts in the United States uh, demanding uh, American parts be used. And in Canada, they're retaliating by municipalities and, and other governmental units not using made in America uh, implements, equipment, whatever you want to call it. And the point I'm getting at here is this is the beginning, and it's not a trade war. It's not going to be a trade war. What it's going to be is an inward facing of each country trying to save their own economies. And they're all going to tit for tat. 
they're all going to erect their little barriers. The Chinese and, and the uh, Russians have already started doing it some time ago. And uh, we're going to see a lot more of it. And all I can tell you is that the best thing the Congress, Congress can do is pass tariffs on goods and services because that will mean that all of these cheap things that are bought, or I should, should say less expensive things that are bought from overseas, will have a tariff on them, and they'll have to compete. They can't compete on their slave labor anymore. And that's good because then Americans can make those products in America, and then those companies that left our shores can return because it won't be worthwhile for them to stay outside the country anymore. And unfortunately, I'm the only commentator and letter writer that I know of who advocates this, and I wish more would. But anyway, this is where all this came from. This is where it's going. And quite frankly, if we continue to allow them to do what they're doing, I don't know who's going to be working at what anymore. Well, Bob Chapman, um, let me comment on the two points that you just made. Uh, A, the globalist or corporate raiders, their banker takeover masters, they like to destroy economies so, so they can sit up top of their fiat uh, currency and uh, liquidity that they make out of nothing and back up with the military to then buy everything up as it implodes. So that's why George Soros, as you know, is bragging. This is the best time of his life. He helped engineer it. Oh, it's so wonderful. Ha, ha, ha. And he funded Obama. You know, this is a big joke to them. And then you expand into the tariffs and trade. The first countries to put their tariffs up are usually the ones that get saved, will be the last to do it. And then by them will be so shot, the media will say the tariffs did it. You know, that's how they always uh, do it. Uh, and this is a lesson in globalism. This was meant to make us dependent on the internationalists. This was meant to make all nations dependent on each other instead of national sovereignty, the bankers above it. And we're now here. And uh, NAFTA and GATT have destroyed us. And the World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, all these different bureaucracies are taking over. The Bilderberg Group agenda is to set up this new World Health Organization with total power over all our health departments. Everything we talked about is now happening. And the very bankers that engineered it all are now the saviors up there posing uh, as our saviors. And the New York Times reports, like it's a good idea, that government readies youth corps to take on vets. And the first line of the New York Times says they're preparing paramilitary squads of high schoolers, middle schoolers, the scouts, to take on gun owners and veterans. I mean, Bob, as much as we know about this, do you ever still pinch yourself like we're in the twilight zone? You know, it's hard to believe it's come to this. We always were afraid that it would evolve this way. And when I saw those children, of course, they're young adults uh, with uh, mock weapons uh, being trained uh, to combat terrorists. And I have it in the next issue, as you have. And uh, I, I, I was shocked. I mean, they, 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 you know, nothing is sacred or sacrosanct. I think a lot of parents are going to pull their children out of uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts uh, because of this. Uh, I don't think they want them under the age of some, something that's like uh, the Hitler Junge. And uh, that, that's really what this amounts to. Well, I mean, you worked against the Russians in Berlin. For all the old guys that were Army officers or in the military, or even people that are, you know, 40, 50, who remember when we were taught this was tyranny, the American people, even when I was a kid, were taught this was tyranny, and I'm only 35. I mean, this is tyranny. Every I mean, One of these things alone would be tyranny, as a London Guardian reporter said earlier, but there's hundreds of them. I mean, they are going down every checkoff list of hardcore tyranny and double-checking. I mean, they're... They are just just pulling out all the stops here because they know the people are going to resist this banker takeover, and so they've been building up forever against us. It it, it it doesn't look like it's confirmed, Bob. They're going for broke. This is going to get hot. They're going all the way. Yeah, They're not stopping. I think, Alex, you're right. And uh, incidentally, I'd like to interject that uh, George Soros was convicted of market rigging in France in appeal to the highest court and lost. So he's a convicted felon who paid a fine. And then he was just recently uh, nabbed in Hungary for the same thing, and he had to pay a large fine there. So the guy is a crook. So all of you people who didn't know, George Soros is a crook. But, but why is he so arrogant? I mean, he's a smart criminal who funds the big liberal websites that attack me every day now. But 
and he literally funded Obama. But why would he tell a press conference? I mean, it was literally in scores of papers a month ago, as you know, Bob. I'm having the.